Good morning, everybody. How you doing this morning? Guys, that was great. Lori, welcome back. I'm just so glad to have Lori back. Just kind of fills the room with her lovely guitar playing. Just want to say good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Center of Unity. We are excited that you're here this morning. If you're here with us in person, we're excited you're here. And, and if you're with us on YouTube or Facebook, we're excited you're there also. If you could put a comment in there and let us know you're there. We want to celebrate this morning with you. We had an exciting week with the snow. I think my kids were more excited about the snow than they were Christmas. They were just ecstatic. Doc was out in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt out there. It was it was crazy. But it was it was a great week. We had a great week and we're excited to be back here again this Sunday. You know, God is good. Can I get an amen on that? God is good. James says that every good and perfect thing comes from God. Do we really believe that? I mean, do we believe that God is good? Down in our heart, do we believe that God is good? Do we have the consciousness of the reality of the goodness of God regardless of what's going on around you? Knowing God's goodness is important because it affects absolutely everything. It affects how you look at life. It affects your perspective on, on all kinds of things that happen. When bad things happen, God is still good. And here's the good news. We can't overdraw on the goodness of God. There's no way to receive too much goodness. We have not even scratched the surface of truly understanding the goodness of God. Augustine says that God is always trying to give us good things, but our hands are generally too full to receive it. Let's sing this song this morning and receive the goodness of God. Here we go. I love you, Lord. All your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Till I lay my head Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God All my life you have been faithful All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. You have led me through the fire. The darkness night, you oppose like no other. I know you as a father, I know you as a friend. But I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. Every breath that I am made, oh, I'm going to see of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. With my life laid down, I surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. Sing that again. Your goodness is running out, it's running out to me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is 
keeps running after, he keeps running after me. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All right, everyone. What a beautiful morning. So glad you're here. Glad to have the whole team back together again. It's been a while. And we welcome you here this morning. In fact, I want to grab my phone here real quick because I want to say hello. I got all the people's faces that I'm looking at here and saying hello to all of you, but we got a bunch of people online too. So grateful they're here with us today. I see Winfield and Shirley and Bill and Gigi and Julie and Karen and, oh Lord, I can't go through all of them. Nicole, Charlotte, Shirley, yay, Sharon's here too. We're just grateful to know. I'm glad you put your comments in because it lets me know and it allows me to feel connected with you. This morning, we are celebrating. We're celebrating the goodness of God. And just as importantly, we're cel celebrating the goodness that is within each of us and the way that we can continue to bring that forward in ways that not only make our lives better, but impact our world. So today, as we celebrate this opportunity to be together, I just invite you to join with me as we also celebrate the awareness of that God life within us, as we take just a moment, as we bring our attention inward, see if you can't feel the goodness, the love, the light that is welling up from within you. We have been created out of the very love and good of God, and we are here to not only claim that for our own lives, but to awaken to it and how it is being called to be expressed into our world. And as we each awaken, as we each show that we are here as children of God, as children of love, our world and our lives are transformed. For the many amazing and beautiful ways that it is unfolding right here, right now in this moment. We say thank you. Thank you, God. Amen. Morning. The fourth principle, unity principle, is we create our life experiences through our way of thinking, feeling, and acting. We look today at our core value of service. We lovingly serve our spiritual community and the community at large. Good Morning America, in honor of Black History Month, gave tribute to a civil rights pioneer, 90-year-old Annie Abrams of Little Rock, Arkansas. She said, service is the rent you pay to stay on God's earth. We serve in many ways, each of us according to our gifts. We pray for each other. We volunteer to our church in various ways and to our community, and we support each other. Service is an important part of unity. Now, today's daily word is dominion. Claiming dominion, I am calm and confident. I'm a powerful spiritual being endowed with dominion, the authority to take command of my thoughts, words, and actions. Even as I work to change my circumstances, I remember I am not constrained by what is happening around me. Claiming dominion, <clears throat> I choose my response in all situations. I live with poise and confidence. I claim dominion over my thoughts and feelings. When I recognize limiting thoughts, I train myself to affirm my spiritual power and freedom. 
Divine wisdom guides me. I feel the strength of the indwelling Christ presence moment by moment, thought by thought, as I use my dominion to establish a positive, fulfilling direction for my life. And from Genesis, then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion. Thank you. All the words to those songs, too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so I have a confession to make. A week ago Saturday, as I found myself sitting on the couch, still in my pajamas Saturday evening, I realized that I was exhausted and probably suffering from some low-level depression, which is unusual for me. I'm one of those fortunate people that have not had to navigate that difficult state of being. For whatever reason, everything just felt heavy. It just felt difficult. I brought to mind my dad's description when his body was failing him that said, it feels like it's walking through water with galoshes on. You have to be of my dad's era to know what galoshes were. He wore them all the time. And certainly, it's this time of year where we don't have as much sun, we're not outdoors, and that oftentimes affects people. And I also noticed that I had been having a lot of um, heartburn over the last several weeks. So I was kind of musing about all of this as I could not get myself to get up and be motivated to do much anything. And I remembered Emily Cady talking about this state of chemicalization in her classic book, Lessons in Truth, that was written over 100 years ago. And chemicalization in the scientific world is the process where two different substances come together, typically a acid and then some kind of alkaline soda. And the process of the two merging together creates this great agitation. There's often a foaming. There's this, there's a very big chemical reaction. And she says this also happens to us at times internally, where we especially have two different beliefs or two different sets of beliefs that are sort of coming up, bumping up against each other within us. And it can create this great agitation. The good news is that once that agitation has the chance to run its course or be alkalined by some other process that we might do, something greater emerges. There's a, there's a, new, a newness that comes out of that process. And all at once I could see this agitation within me as I've been going through this spiral dynamic series 
looking at these different value systems through the lens of um, these different colors, and I could see orange and green and maybe a little blue all kind of clashing within me, trying to navigate those different values and beliefs that sometimes seem totally opposite of each other. And as part of that, the agitation that comes up is worry, is frustration, is a sense of things just being unsettled. And you throw in this unpredictable and uncertainty of a pandemic and a collapsing roof in the sanctuary. And then I told myself, well, it's a wonder that you get out of bed each morning at all. Good on you. Feeling better already. So my next focus was to try and get clarity around how I could navigate these very real challenges that I know I'm not alone in trying to move through with a greater sense of peace, with a lightness. That's what seemed to have been missing lately. It's just a lightness to get up and go through and work through all of this. And I have to tell you that my little sarcastic ego, those of you around me enough know I have one of those. Um, the first thing that came to mind was, well, if you lose a little weight, you'd be a lot lighter. <laughs> and then my higher self said, well, that's not exactly the lightness that I'm seeking, although that would be lovely. I'm seeking something that allows me to be different from the inside out because I don't have control over all the outer challenges that are happening, or at least not a lot of them. And I do want to show up in the best way I can. And sometimes the best way I can describe that is just a sense of higher energy, higher vibration that brings, that, that allows life to feel a little bit lighter. I know we're in a time of great change. We've been in that place. It's not something that's new, but it seems a little bit more intense right now at the moment. And I may not be able to change that, but I can change how I show up to it. So I asked my wise friend in the flame, remember from last week, we could discover that they're right in the center of that flame. So I closed my eyes and I said, help me understand how I can get through this better. And I'm going to ask you to stick around for the rest of the story a little later. You know, seeking answers from our inner wisdom, from our connection with the divine, rather than always looking to sort of the conventional wisdom of the world, is a very orange thing to do. That's the level that we're exploring this morning. As we continue to look at this model of spiral dynamics, mm, that's not the one I wanted. Nick, could I get the, the, the spiral up there? Yeah, that one's going to come up in just a little bit. But just as a reminder, we're kind of looking at this model, and that's all it is. It's just a way to understand the long view of our history. And it's a model that takes the evolutionary changes in our own beliefs and values that have happened throughout our human journey that we've on, been on and helps us to understand them at a, a broader perspective. The orange level is pretty new in the long lens of our history, arising primarily in the last three to 400 years, although we can see it beginning to emerge even as far out as 2,500 years ago. And the model predicts that this rise in the values has now moved in the orange level to one of individualism. We seem to go back and forth between this idea of we need to change for the collective whole and we're looking to change and value things about the individual. So the orange is all about the individual once again. I call it orange is the new red, the new and improved red. And you can almost kind of see that too if you've been following along, that where red was all about individual individualism, it was focused on power, on conquering, on being able to shape the world that you, the way you wanted to do with force in many respects. Orange now wants that same level of power, but it is focused on the creative power 
to be able to solve the issues that are out there. Orange evolves out of the sometimes rigid and limiting class system of blue. We can see this in our history a few thousand years ago. Law and order led to clashes amongst humanity, especially with the church and with the monarchies that had now found themselves in const in the power structure. And the challenge with this, once it got more developed, was that these entities, whether it was the church, and there was only one um, up until more recent years, or those who were the ruling royals of that particular area, often acted above the law. They abused their authority. They lived off in luxury off of the taxes and the monies that they conscripted from those around them. And they offered little hope or fairness to the poor working class and those who at that time were enslaved. So orange emerges out of revolution. We see the French and the American Revolution unfold at this time. And they're not fighting to take over a particular area of the world. They're fighting for their freedom to be able to live as they see best for them, to be able to do the things that they want to do without having the limitations forced on them by the ruling class. Instead, they really focus on how we can improve our lives. This is the area and the age where scientific ideas come to the forefront, where we start to get focused on medicines that can help ease the pain and suffering of the human condition. We look at ourselves rather than the kings or rather than the church for answers. Out of these orange values, democracy is created. One person, one vote, becomes this new concept that had never really been for, then tried out in our human evolution. We each were given the individual right to do what we could do to better ourselves, to lift ourselves out of the class that we might have been born into, which heretofore, that was not necessarily anything anybody thought possible. If you were born into the poor working class, into the farming, that's where you were going to stay. That was just the way that the system worked. This became the value of, you know, you can pick yourself up by your bootstraps. You can do what's necessary with the amount of effort and ingenuity to create a new and better life for yourself. It emphasizes build to build bigger and better and stronger. A few weeks ago, I shared a lens of different aspects of power, which often play in to these different value systems that we look at. And when we looked at red, and even in large extent blue, the power structure was power over. It was, I, there's one person or group of people at the top, and they have power over everyone underneath them. When we move to orange, we start to begin to experience power two, T-O. Power two says that we have the capacity to make changes. It is that use of relationships to not have dominion over others, but to work in collaboration with others to create something better. It's built on the unique potential of every person to shape his or her life and world. It's the power to make a difference, to create something, to achieve goals. This power too really becomes the beginnings of the unity movement. It was the awakening to, I have a power within that I can use to make a difference in my world. We see it through the Age of Enlightenment, starting in the 1700s in Europe. 
this quest for understanding and knowledge and to be able to use that knowledge to make a positive difference in our world. We see this in the process where people begin to question the long-held doctrines that we knew up until that point around creation, around the way we have been made and the way our bodies work. It gives rise to what we call the new thought movement. It's not just about unity, but there were many, many, many different groups and individuals out there exploring this whole new spiritual frontier. People like Thoreau or Emerson, the transcendental movement, all of these things were all happening in this burgeoning orange set of values that were now being infused, especially in the United States, at a pretty widespread level. We've been looking at these colors through the lens of the Bible, and given that the orange values were extremely rare when the Bible was written, they're not as easy to find, to point to and say, there, we can see that in that particular writing or those particular events. However, when we look to the teachings of Jesus, when we look at what he came and the message that he shared, we can see many examples of this indiv individualistic orange popping up. We'll also see green and yellow and turquoise, the colors. It's almost as if Jesus had the whole rainbow of colors within his consciousness that he could pull out and use depending on what the circumstances were. You know, one of the themes in the Gospels is Jesus clashing with those in authority, those priests that were especially the head of the temple at that time. And most of their arguments, if you want to see them there, most of the priest's challenges were all about Jesus and his followers not following the letter of the law. Remember, we're coming out of blue, and blue has a lot of laws. And as this blue um, energy went on for thousands of years, they just continued to make more and more laws. That was the solution. Something's not working right. Well, let's create another law. Let's create another rule to help maintain the order and the peace. Jesus chose to heal on the Sabbath, we're told. He instructed his disciples to go ahead and harvest the wheat and prepare it so that they could have food for themselves. And he was questioned for that. He was ultimately arrested for doing things that they considered were against the laws of that time. And yet he was trying to help people see that the laws were here to serve the people, not necessarily to control the people. And they had to be, they had to be part of the system that was there to help rather than to harm. Compassionate wisdom was necessary when you were looking to bring this sense of order into that system. And Jesus even addresses this. He says in Matthew 5, 17, don't think that I've come to abolish the law. I'm not here to throw the laws out. I have come to fulfill the law. I have come here to help you understand what the energy of order and rules and guidelines are. They're here to help you, not to try and harm you. He came, ultimately, he tells us, to fulfill that eternal law that law of love. That was his primary mission to say, there is one law that I ask you to always follow. And he tells them right as he's getting ready to exit the earth to love one another as I have loved you. He's trying to get the people to understand that this creative energy that we have is really here to serve each other to serve the greater good. And he invites us to think about that, to at least be willing to consider that when we're making our decisions. He also asked each of us to consider when we're seeking to enforce the law, 
the energy that we're coming from when we're doing that. There's the story of a woman who was an adulteress, and so was the man that she was with, but the rules didn't apply to the men at that time. They were only the women, and the punishment, if you you know, had intimate relations with a man who wasn't your husband, was death. In fact, the typical way was to stone the woman to death, and it wasn't just those priests up there who were fulfilling and, and carrying out the punishment. It was the people of the village. It was the people of that community that were called to carry out this punishment. And Jesus steps into this in the one instance, at least we're told, where he's present and asks them, who of you has the right, has the heart, has the consciousness to throw the first stone? He didn't say, this is a bad law, we shouldn't do it. He didn't say, you know, this woman was right. He said, with compassionate wisdom, how will you best carry out this law? And then he looks at the woman and he says, go, don't do this anymore. Have a good life. Don't sin. Find a place where you can know the love of God. In fact, he goes on to tell people in a very individualistic way, these things I'm doing, you can do them too. This is not just me who has been given a special dispensation from God to love in a greater way. All of you can do this. That was a very individualistic way to give power to the people. And Jesus was a great promoter of personal power. When aligned with the creator, all things are possible. He says, believe, and you shall be able to achieve whatever you want. That is the central energy of this orange level. So here's the rest of the story. So I asked for my guidance of how I could up my energy level. That was kind of what I was, you know, how do I begin to feel a greater sense of not just well-being, but of enthusiasm to do the work that was mine to do, to vibrate. I, I like to see this in an energetic form, to vibrate at a higher level than what I'd been experiencing. And what came to me was I was guided to do a, what I'm just calling a sun meditation. I said, you need to get in the sun and sit for 15 minutes at least. And as you're sitting in the sun and feeling the sun's rays, because there's a really palatable energy when you sit in the sun, imagine that those rays are actually transmuting this heavier energy. They are infusing that energy. You can call it dark if you want. I don't know what color it was, but it was just heavy. It, it, stirring it up. Some started to break away in my imagination as I was, some just changed. And it changed, it was infused with so much light, it became light. And then the other side of this was, was to also see this sunlight bringing a sense of neutrality to these clashing values that had been agitating almost it's it's like my spiritual tums to bring a greater sense of balance and peace and a feeling of um i don't even know what the right word is but to really feel a sense of integration of those things rather than clashing of them now, I'll tell you, so I started to do this. I started to do this last Monday, and it had an amazing effect for me. Um, now, there were days I had to get creative because there was no sun. We had a couple of days where there wasn't a whole lot of sun to be found. Well, we made a fire. I'll tell you, sitting in front of a crackling fire has a very similar effect. And even 
you know, finding a window indoors. I sat in my car yesterday with the sun straight. It was a little cold to be sitting outside. So I just sat in my car and just closed my eyes and let the sun wash over me in that enclosed place. And you know when all else fails? We have this beautiful thing we've been gifted called imagination. And while it's really nice to feel the physical energy, you can do it all in mind. So whether you have been experiencing any heaviness like me, or you just want to feel a little lighter, we're going to spend a few moments in meditation and see if in our own mind we can bring that energy of the sun to allow us to feel a greater sense of calmness and peace within and to lighten up whatever might be heavy for us. So as you just, right where you are, take a moment to let go of anything that you might be holding on to. Just breathe into this time, into this place. Close your eyes or perhaps just look at that color swirl that's up on the screen right now. And imagine that the warmth, that the brilliant light of the sun is shining on you right now. Every part of your body is being filled, is being warmed with the sun's rays. It starts to sink in and penetrate through your skin. It infuses your whole system of circulation. And it even moves beyond the body to what many people call the aura, the energetic body that extends beyond our physical space and starts to infuse that light energy with a warm golden light. And see if you can't imagine that beautiful, radiant, high vibrational energy as it seeks out and penetrates even the darkest parts of our being. Those places that feel solid and heavy begin to vibrate with this light, to break up, to dissipate the warmth begins to infill that space. And in our heart space, and in our thinking part of our being, we see this light illuminating the very best of the values, of the beliefs, of the energy of love in every system. We give thanks for every lesson learned. And we celebrate the opportunity to be able to integrate and carry forward with us the light that we've discovered with each new turning of our human evolution. Just breathe for a moment in this. See if there's a sense of greater peace. And know that you can return to this place simply by closing your outer eyes and focusing on this inner brilliance 
the sun of our earth is as brilliant as the light and the love and the energy of God throughout the entire universe. And we give thanks to know that there is no place we can be where that love is not present. We invite it in and allow it to guide all that we are called to do and to be and to give to our world. And as you gently begin to bring your attention back to this time and to this space, take another deep breath in. And whenever you're ready, you can open your eyes. So I just invite you to try it and see. I'm going to continue to work with it and see if I can't get through each day with a greater energy of enthusiasm for bringing the greater light into this world. You know, right now, worldwide, the orange set of values is about 25 to 30% of our population. In the United States, it's probably closer to 50% of our population. Thank you. She says yes. And worldwide, it's estimated that it wields about 45 to 50 percent of the power in our world. And as it's true for every level, as beautiful and magnificent that this creative energy has brought to our world, there's also a shadow side. For each level there is. In fact, each new level that comes out of this spiral is in response to some of the excesses that show up in the previous level. So for orange, we've had so much change. I just look at the last 100, 150 years and it's just mind boggling how much our world has changed. But our drive to progress at all costs has at times taken an enormous toll on humankind. It's taken a toll on the environment. From the deplorable working conditions of poor and enslaved people, including children who were forced to work in horrible conditions, today we would be appalled if that continued to go on. In fact, we are appalled when it goes on in other parts of our world to the disregard of how all this progress was affecting this home, Mother Earth, that we have, the green level emerges, and that's what we're going to explore next week. And despite its shadow, orange values have brought about tremendous and in many respects positive change in our world. It arose with people like da Vinci and Newton and Einstein and Ford and the Wright brothers and Washington Carver, Bell, Edison. It's just amazing when you think about how many people really had the energy and put that energy to use to change our world, whose creativity and drive changed our lives for the better and continues to allow us to dream big. Our invitation as we explore these levels is to integrate the very best of each of these. We don't want to dismiss one as not being valuable because they're all valuable. We want to just take the best out of each one and allow it to support us in continuing to create a world that works for all, to continue to create our purpose for being on this planet, which is to love one another, just as God loves us. And when life feels difficulty, difficulty, heavy and difficult and agitated, to allow that light, that light of God, to be able to transform our darkness. And in the meantime, Tom's also work really well, too. Bless you this week as you go through this process. my eyes 
hearts and I can see the world that's waiting for me that I call my own. Through the dark, through the door, through where no one's been before, but it feels like home. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say I've lost my mind. I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy. We can live in a world that we design. Every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be. A vision of the one I see A million dreams is all it's gonna take A million dreams for the world we're gonna make There's a house so we can build Every room is what's good things from far away special things I compile each one there to make you smile on a rainy day they can say they can say it all sounds crazy they can say they can say we've lost our mind We seem to do this every time. We really do. I don't know. I don't know. We can find what you're doing. Who knows these days? Oh. Well, see, we just roll with it. There's nothing we can do. Technology, what are you going to do? I can't control it. Yeah. Okay. Because every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be, a vision of the one I see. A million dreams, it's all it's going to take. Oh, a million dreams for the world we're going to make. A million dreams for the world we're going to make. She did well, but trust me, that's like hell for my daughter. Um, <laughs> she's growing up. She can just roll with the punches so much better. And I know many of you who've known her for a long, long time. No, this is true. It was beautiful. And it's definitely an orange song that's out of the, the greatest showman who you can just go and create whatever you want. And that's the energy we want to take into this week. Well, it is our opportunity now to share of our financial good with this community, with all of the efforts that we continue to make to make a positive difference in our world, to inspire spiritual growth, and to bring about positive ways in which we can each live into this world. We're not doing an offertory collection here while we're in this temporary space, but we do have baskets available at each of the doors that you can drop your gift off in. There are also affirmations there that you can pick one up for this week. And we certainly invite those who are watching us via YouTube and Facebook to 
go to our website, centerofunity.org, and go to the give page there, and you can also find affirmations that will bless you for this week. You just pick the picture that speaks to you, and you will be given a good, positive thought to carry with you throughout the week. So for all the good that is flowing in and through this ministry, we join together and we bless it. Here we go. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother God. Good morning, everyone. I'm Haley Ferguson, and I am welcoming our visitors today. If you're watching us for the first time, we are glad you have chosen to join us. We invite you to visit our website and fill out our connection card. And if you're local, we invite you to visit us in person. If you are visiting us in person for the first time, please complete a visitor card that is found at the tables of the offering baskets and drop it in at the basket or leave it at the visitor's desk. Welcome you all. And just want to plug that we do have a membership one-on-one -on -one meeting next Sunday at one. Um, I'm happy that I'll be attending. It's on Zoom. Um, so if you have any questions, I'm sure Mary can help answer them. Um, it's also on the app. So I'm going to be in on that. Um, I've been coming since last summer, so I'm happy I'm going to become a official member. And today's appreciation is for the book, sorry, the bookstore volunteers. Since we reopened last April, the bookstore has been staffed by volunteers, most recently Debbie Holt, Phyllis Lanabit, and Barbara Luters. Debbie off, uh, often donates her time during the week to prepare the bookstore for sales, for rearranging merchandise, and displaying new items to maximize their appeal. She, Barbara, and Phyllis take turns staffing the bookstore on Sundays, so be sure to stop by and thank them for their volunteer service. And while you're at it, pick up some of pick up something for yourself or a loved one. So to Debbie, Barbara, and Phyllis, we love you, we bless you, we truly appreciate you, and we behold the Christ in you. Namaste. Here's what's coming up at Center of Unity. We're looking for someone to do the monthly birthday and anniversary cards to our congregants. You'll be provided with all the needed supplies and info. It's a simple thing, but very meaningful to so many. Please see Mary Salerno if you're interested. We're looking forward to offering Sunday School to all ages soon. So that we can be ready for their return, we need to know which age groups will be returning and we're looking for volunteers to facilitate and teach the lessons. Please complete the surveys that you can find in our weekly email or on the COU app. One Sunday a month, you can help serve your church community at our fellowship time after service. Each week, we ask those whose last name matches the schedule to bring a snack to share. Licensed Unity teacher Gigi Johnson is hosting our Membership 101 class via Zoom from 1 to 3 p.m. on Sunday, February 13th. Here you will learn more about the Unity Movement and Center of Unity. You'll also have the opportunity to join our membership and be welcome to the church community the following Sunday. You can sign up from our website or the COU app. Be sure to pick up your membership manual from the church. There are multiple ways you can make a donation to Center of Unity. You can drop your donation off at the church, mail it to our P.O. Box, visit our website, use the CAU or Vidmo app, or you can text to give. Your continued support is greatly appreciated. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here today. It's so good to see each and every one of you. And for you that joined us online, thank you so much for for being with us this morning, why don't we all stand up and we'll do our peace song together. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth. 
peace that was meant to be. With God as our Father, family all are we. Let me walk with my family in perfect harmony. The moment now, with every step I take, let this be my joy as To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it. And so as we go into this day, into this week, tapping into our power to create, we go knowing our prayer for protection together. The light of God surrounds us. I am the light of God. The love of God enfolds us. I am the love of God. The power of God protects us. I am the power of God. The presence of God watches over us. I am the presence of God. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well. Have a beautiful week. Mm -hmm.